Today, we're going on a journey, following in the footsteps of the Apostle Paul on his first missionary trip to Cyprus. This was the first Christian missionary journey of all time. Although this mission trip is only mentioned briefly in the book of Acts, what's exciting today is that we can follow along the ancient road that Paul very likely took. We're now able to construct and experience something of what the apostles faced along the way. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Our first stop is Salamis in northern Cyprus, where you can still see the remains of this port town. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. Israel, and you who fear God, listen. From David's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a saviour, Jesus. And we declare to you good news. That promise that was made to the fathers, God has fulfilled this for us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus. As it is also written in the second psalm, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Though they found no cause for death in him, they asked Pilate that he should be put to death. And when they had fulfilled all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. I tell you, as we come down this ancient road, it's incredible to see how intact some of these ancient towns and cities are, 2,000 years later. Just imagine Paul coming to houses like these, occupied by Christians who had fled from the persecution in Jerusalem after seeing Stephen martyred. 
Paul coming face to face with those that he once persecuted and sharing fellowship and all things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. So, Paul continued his journey down through Cyprus, probably walking around 15 to 20 miles per day. But you'll never guess the next place this ancient road leads us. Have a think. What's the main enemy that has stood against the gospel from the start? Yep, that's right, paganism. And we're about to come face to face with one of the biggest examples of this. A place that may well shock you. Somewhere deep in the woods, as Paul, Mark and Barnabas continued their journey across Cyprus. As we come right down to the south end of Cyprus, and you can see as we come through these woods, what was the two biggest pagan temples. Apollo and Aphrodite, both the male and female god and goddess. So as we come through these woods, we come, in, come towards the Apollo Hilates Sanctuary, which means the God of the Woods. So folks, this is the stag god that was being worshipped, the bull, Apollo, and uh, once again in the middle of the woods. So our journey takes us to this incredible site in the middle of the woods, the complex of the Temple of Apollo, which housed thousands of people. What we're looking at here is the front entrance to the dormitories. Most of this was added on in the refurbishment in the year 100, so 50 years after Paul, they extended it. These are the dormitories where people would have stayed, which would have housed hundreds of people. So you can see how big this whole uh, temple of Apollo, the stag god, worship was. There's some huge underground cave system. Look how big that is down there. And as we turn up this road, this was called the Sacred Way. The road built here towards the Temple of Apollo, which you can see in the distance, the remains of that structure, that Roman structure, which was updated by the... But before, before the Romans, this was here for hundreds and hundreds of years BC. So this, this whole complex was here for a long time. Uh, you can see the high priest's house and you can see all of the uh, entrances to what they believe are stores, you know, they're selling offerings and gifts and sacrifices as people, you know, as you'd walk up to this temple. So you can see the kind of place that at least that Paul, Barnabas and Mark would have come to, you know, on their journey across Cyprus, in their first missionary journey. Can you imagine? I'm sure they got a lot of training for what would be many missionary journeys, telling people the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ in such a twisted environment. Very wicked deities. 
Interestingly, only a few miles up the road and we come to another major pagan temple, this time of the female goddess, Aphrodite. The journey that Paul was taking preaching the gospel and he came to the two biggest pagan centres of the Roman world. You know, it makes me think of the people that say, well, the, the Bible is sexist and all of this kind of stuff. But it makes absolutely no sense because it isn't. Because if you think what was going on here back in the pagan times, that women were treated as prostitutes, as objects, as slaves to the temple of Aphrodite and Diana, sexual slavery. And it's like the, the message of the gospel that Paul was bringing is that, yes, we have different roles in the body, but we're all of equal worth, that we don't need to be subjected to the dominion of sin and of this slavery and bondage of the flesh. And serving these evil gods and goddesses that treat people this way. So for husbands to love your wives and treat them as your own flesh, this is a message of hope the gospel in Jesus Christ, that there is more to life, there is more to this existence than these, this depravity, that there is something to live for of purity and righteousness and by his power. What a message that Paul was bringing to this otherwise depraved pagan world. And right in the centre of the sanctuary, the participants of the Aphrodite cult, they used to worship the sacred black stone. Sound familiar? The volcanic stone. The philosopher's stone. This is what this is all about, this pagan religion, right from the very beginning, witchcraft. Paul finally arrives in Paphos, the capital of Cyprus, to speak with the Roman ruler about Jesus Christ. He is confronted by a pagan witch who tries to stop him. <laughs> who do you think you are, Saul of Tarsus? This is the land of our great goddess Aphrodite. She, she is our wonderful queen. queen. Sergius, master, pay no attention to this Christian lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. Could this have been in the location where Paul would have spoken directly to the Sergius Paulus, to the Roman governor?
a bad little palace overlooking the sea in a very prominent position in Paphos. <laughs> 